Welcome to this one-off special called Inside the Workshop of a Friend, testing a Stuart S50 model steam plant in my friend's workshop, starting with showing the machine tools that he has and something that he built a few years ago. My friend's name is Dennis and he's 83 years old, which is well old, isn't it? Dennis lives in the same village as I do and his house is just down the road from me and his house has an attached garage which he uses as a workshop. And in the centre of the workshop is a really nice old smart and brown lathe. This is very similar to the smart and brown lathe that I have, just a bit smaller. And in common with my smart and brown 1024 lathe, it's got a very wide bed. This type of lathe is called a tool room lathe, and they are very accurate and very strong. Dennis doesn't have quite as much space as I do in my workshop. Here's another shot of the lathe. You can see where it sits in the middle of the workshop area. The workshop has everything that you would need, including a drilling machine as shown here, that sits on one of the side benches. And at the left hand side is a milling machine. This is a small chest and milling machine, which is a perfect size for a small workshop area. Dennis also has one of these. This is the Warco version of the one that I bought. This is a three in one machine. It's a set of bending rollers with a sheet metal bending arrangement in the center and a guillotine at the bottom. I have the Clark version of this machine and it's very similar but the rollers are better on this one, they have grooves in them at each end. Last but not least, a really well used vice on the bench. Dennis was telling me that he actually likes filing. I don't particularly like filing because it takes too long, but I recommend doing it, it's a skill well worth learning. In the garage workshop is something that Dennis built quite a few years ago, it's a three wheeler car. I don't mean a Reliant Robin, this was a kit car. Dennis welded up the chassis, and the running parts are all from a Citroen 2CV. You can hear this buzzing up and down the village on nice warm summer days, because it makes a very unusual, distinctive sound. In the front it has a V-twin motorcycle engine, a Motor Guzzi motorcycle engine to be exact. This engine drives the front wheels of the car, so there's plenty of grip, and the rear wheel just dangles there to hold the back of the car off the ground. And unlike three-wheeler cars with a single wheel at the front, this one does not turn over when it goes round corners. My reason for visiting Dennis in his workshop is to test run this small steam plant that I gave him. It's a Stuart S50 steam engine and a Stuart 500 boiler. This engine and boiler came from a customer in America who sent me a lot of parts from his workshop, and this boiler was badly crushed at one end. And in a previous video, I showed how I removed the bad dent at one end of it by first of all annealing the boiler, heating it up, and then forcing the dent out using hydraulic pressure. If you haven't seen the video when I show this operation, it's worth looking at. First of all, I would like to introduce you briefly to Dennis. We're going to run this for the first time. My name's Dennis and I've got my friend Keith here. So the first thing to do is to undo the safety valve. I'm going to put that in there. Now then, Keith, do I need to... Watch that, yeah. Watch that. There, it's just starting to show in the sight glass, look. How far, Keith, about there? No, a bit more. This boiler isn't fitted with a hand pump. I think this is an old 500 boiler because it isn't fitted with a bush to take a check valve. I fitted a steam grade silicone o-ring to the safety valve so you just screw it in by hand. I bought the gas burner system from Forest Classics and Dennis made all the fittings for it. I also bought a gas canister adapter and here Dennis is screwing the canister onto the valve. The engine behind the valve is an old Stuart double 10 that I also gave to Dennis and he just tinkers about with it from time to time. Dennis had even made a wooden hole to support the gas tank so it didn't fall over. The gas is lit, and then all of a sudden, Dennis slumped forward onto the bench. At first I thought he'd died, but no, he was just checking whether the gas burner was lit, and in no time at all, he started to move again, so everything was okay. At the time I pointed this out to Dennis, and he found it quite amusing. My friend Dennis slumped forward onto the desk. <laughs> <laughs> the funeral's a week on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, lovely blue flame there. Great, as long as it's blue. 
I asked Dennis if he had any old rags kicking about, but all we could find was this old pair of pyjamas. And even with a cloth that size, Dennis still managed to burn his fingers. The chimney, of course, was very hot. I thought it would explain why. The reason that's hot is because the heat of the burner is going up the chimney. But eventually when we get steam up, the first steam that goes to the, the yeah. cylinder is going to condense into water and it's going to come up there like a fountain. I spent a bit of time explaining obvious things to Dennis and in the meantime he was using an oil can to lubricate all the moving parts. I noticed that the oil was a little bit on the thin side but it will be okay for this test. This small 500 boiler fitted with a small gas burner is very efficient. The water boiled quickly. In this clip Dennis is opening the steam valve for the first time and the engine starts to move. That's encouraging. Rotate the flywheel. As you can clearly see, as the system is not fitted with a condenser, the initial condensate goes up the chimney. You see what I mean? OK, put the chimney back in. But after a while, it stops and steam starts to come out of the pipe. By the sound of the engine, I can tell that the lubricating oil is a bit on the thin side, because it is rattling a bit. After a while we stop the engine and let the pressure build up until the safety valve blow off. Right, so turn your gas down a little bit. Turn your fire down. And as you've just heard, I advised Dennis to turn down the gas pressure. That way the burner wouldn't be as fierce and the safety valve wouldn't blow off quite as vigorously. Can you see it all right? The blow flame's about that big now. That's fine. Right. That's the driver generator. Oh yeah. I'm gonna ask Dylan to have a look at it. Yeah, yeah. Dennis's wife Janet popped into the workshop to see what we were doing, and she said, Well, where's the steam? I explained that the heat of the fire going up the chimney was the reason why we couldn't see any steam. That's lovely. Hence the demonstration with the rubber pipe. Time to drain and refill the displacement lubricator. When you open the valve at the bottom of the displacement lubricator, water comes out first, followed by oil. At this stage, the steam tap on the boiler is open, and the valve on the displacement lubricator is also open. You initially need pressure to drain the lubricator. The next part of the job involves removing the top cap, and you need to make sure that there isn't any pressure going to the lubricator. So turn off the steam tap on the boiler and turn the tap off on the lubricator. The boiler steam tap is not 100% steam tight. That's why the oil is bubbling. But if you turn off the tap on the lubricator, that allows you to fill it with oil. For the displacement lubricator, this is not lubricating oil. It is steam cylinder oil and it's a lot thicker. After refitting the top cap and cleaning the area using Dennis's pyjamas, we're ready to go again. It's very important not to forget to open the valve on the lubricator at one turn. And that's it from me. Apart from my voice, possibly on the video, I'm not going to do any more narration. I would like to wish all of my viewers a very happy holiday and a healthy, happy new year. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Just showing water down up.
Walk the water level like. It's just about, if you hit the bottom, Peter, it's, it's there, look. Okay, look, let's turn the top then, turn the lower one. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.